Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details. The information contained within this podcast does not consider your personal circumstances and is of a general nature only. You should not act on it without first obtaining professional financial advice specific to your circumstances. Paul Atherton is an ex-Wall Street advisor on a mission to help young people win back their financial power, wealth and security. He does this by helping them understand the hidden world of finance, risk and investments, helps them figure out how it impacts them and to seize the opportunities to make it work to their advantage. This is Paul Street Journal. I'm here this morning with Paul Atherton. How are you, Paul? Hi, Tim. I'm really well. That's good to hear. I have a friend who studies international studies. Actually, I have a few friends that study international studies. Mm. Um, and they're often talking about China. And, mm. and it's still going to be, you know, after 20 years of hearing this m- most of my life, it's still going to be this this superpower. It's going to yeah. take over the world. And, you know, for some people, I guess it already has. So yeah. what do you think? Okay. Well, let me say I'm suspicious. I look, let me go back to a, a very early in my career. It was you know, just the beginning of the 90s. I um, entered uh, Wall Street and I was a young risk manager and part of a group of very, very competent um, quantitative experts in the field. And I was lucky enough, I was, you know, um, taken under the wing by some very smart people and they brought me into trading meetings, uh, the senior trading meeting once a week. It was fantastic, a lot of fun. But one of those trading meetings was... Uh, uh, very famous Harvard economist, famous at the time. And um, he would bring in papers and papers and briefcases and talk wax lyrical about how Japan is going to come back. Now, this was early night. So Japan's bubble broke. I say the bubble broke, but um, economy stopped booming uh, either late 80s or early 90s, depending on where you look at it. But let's say 1990. So it'd been off, off the boil for at least a year. But according to this economist, it was coming back. And then when a week would go by and I'd get invited back to this meeting and we'd talk about the various aspects of trading and he would again say, you know, Japan's coming back. And after I got out of one of those meetings, I said to my um, boss, I go, he really likes uh, Japan, that guy. And he just looked at me and said, listen, Paul, no one listens to economists. It's French. No one. <laughs> no one listens to them. Um And uh, he... he dropped an F-bomb in there too to make sure I really understood. Mm. Um, now, the point of saying that little bit of a story was because Japan, so a lot, lots of my, um, you know, I see commentators and media pundits saying China's overtaking the world are too young to remember Japan was exactly the same, exactly the same position. And potentially, if you look at it, was in a much better position to be the world's leader and taking over the world. Now, China has taken on the exact same model, um, that Japan did. It's called an Asia development model. And um, part of that model is, unfortunately, it takes on huge amounts of debt. So it's what I call an investment-led model. So to boost your economy, you really, you're really either either, um, it's either consumption or your investment. So why do you invest? You invest today so you can consume tomorrow. That's what we do in the West. Roughly 60 to 70% of our GDP is from consumption, but that's not the case in China. Like, like, really, really low. I think there was a recent study out of the globaleconomist.com that placed out of 151 countries, China was 144 in terms of its position of consumption. It's at rock bottom. And for such a large economy and for such an economy that's overtaking the world, it's ridiculous. And the reason it is so low in consumption is because it's so high in investment. And it's so high in investment it's because the model pushes that and it takes money from the consuming sector, the household sector, places it into the investment sector. Now, 30 years ago when China was starting, well, let's say argue, 30, when Japan was going, going uh, through, finished its bubble, China was investing. It was very easy to invest in productive assets, productive, very easy. But today, probably for the last 10 years, almost most of the money that's thrown into investment is wasted. It's not productive. I could go into reasons why, but suffice to say, I think that's pretty well agreed. You know, even the 
most ardent China bulls would agree that Chinese investment has wasted a large amount of it. Is and what that means if it's wasted investment is literally debt, because the the money that creates the investment is not being paid by the um, by the productive output from the investment. So it's debt, and this has been going on wildly and massively for the last. Ten years, and this is a huge, huge problem for China. So it's got to deal with the debt. Now, as we did in a previous podcast, we spoke about Trump. Now he's attacking the trade account. Now, the uh, Chinese have used the surplus, as I th- think, of as, a, as a pressure reliever for their economy. They push their surplus on other co- economies. That means I think of a surplus as a good way to think about it as exporting demand. Because they don't have the demand at home, they export it to the United States or other countries in Europe. But there's not the appetite as there was to take this. But after the GFC, so China now, particularly with Trump taking the offensive, and I'm sure the similar things will happen in Europe. That pressure valve of the surplus is being taken away. So China is in an awful lot of problems. So it's what it's had. It's had massive debt at the, exactly the wrong time, effectively, that it wants to. Sort of transition to a consumer-based economy, uh, so that's a very, very long way of saying I'm expecting China to do the same rounds as Japan. So Japan in the 70s was about seven or eight percent of the global economy. By the peak, it was nearly 20 percent. You know, where, wow. whereas you know the bulls at the time, sort of my economist friend, mm-hmm. were expecting it to grow to 30 percent, and the pessimists were saying it would grow to 25 percent of the global economy. Wow. It's now back to seven or eight percent. So it's done a round trip, and I expect the same for China. I often hear that they have a like a growing middle class. Is that going to have any? Is that a sa- yeah. saving grace for them, or is it honestly well, just not as big as we're being told? No, no. I, I think one thing that's very much, much misunderstood is is the GDP will go down. It has to go down because it's got to pay the debt, and investments will go down with it. But the consumer will win because the consumer has been financing that. So the average Chinese household has really been had its money taken away from it, so it can fund these ridiculously large overinvestments. And as that sort of headwinds have been taken away, the brakes have been taken off. The Chinese consumer should do very well. And I look to the global economy and I say all parts that are connected with the Chinese consumer should do extremely well. All parts of the global economy that are connected to the Chinese investment infrastructure. Should do should struggle. GDP will go down, but the consumer, the Chinese consumer, should do very well. All right, so we should be looking forward to a lot more Chinese films hitting our cinemas. Exactly. Thanks for that, Paul. Paul Street Journal. Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free. And you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details.